So what if I told you that the origin of Nigerian problem came from the assassination of two men? Will you believe me? Well, technically you won't, cause it can be argued that the inception of Nigerian problem was from its origin in 1914. But the fact still remains that if amalgamation didn't happen in 1914, it still won't solve the general problem which the African continent have been and is currently facing. And this is why I'm of the opinion that the assassination of Sir Abu Bakr Tafara Balewa and Sir Amadou Bello changed the course of Nigerian history more than we can even imagine or phantom. Let me explain. You see, prior to the death of these two leaders, there was already sub two hatred between the three major tribes, mostly notably between the Igbos and the Hausa Fulanis. But after the 15 general 1966 coup that killed Sir Abu Bakr Tafala Balewa, it gave rise to a counter coup and repercussions six months later that later resulted to the genocide and ethnic cleansing of the Igbos in the north, which in turn gave rise to the declaration of the successionist nation of Biafra that eventually turned into a full blown war. But it's also important to note that the victors of the war have been and is currently ruling Nigeria to this very day in one form or the other. Well, in this video, we'll be taking a deep dive into the rise of Nigeria's first Prime Minister, Sir Abu Bakr Tafala Balewa, and what led to his assassination and the legacy he left behind. So please, if you've not liked this video, like this video and subscribe, because it won't hurt you if you do, but it actually hurt me if you don't. So please, like I said, like this video and subscribe, like this video and subscribe, and let's get right into the video. So for us to understand the death of Tafala Balewa, we have to have knowledge of his past. You see, Tafala Balewa was born in the month of December 1912, as it's really unclear about the actual date of his inception, to Yakubu, Danzala and Fatima Ina, who were of Gere and Fulani ethnicity respectively. The name Tafala Balewa comes from a corrupted Fulani language, Tafari meaning rock and Balagi meaning black. You see, I would love to say that Tafala Balewa came from a humble background that prioritized learning as he was enrolled into a Quranic school at a very young age. Thereafter, he started his primary and middle education in Bauchi from 1922 to 1928. He then subsequently enrolled at the Castina Teachers Training College from 1928 to 1933, where he met and built relationships with various um, future Northern leaders, such as the likes of Amadou Bello or Amadou Rabao and Abu Bakr Iman, to name a few. And according to the record, Balewa was a resilient pupil as he excelled in his academics. And when I mean resilient, I mean it in every sense of the word resilient. As it was said that he usually trails for over 400 kilometers from his school to his house twice a year to celebrate the holidays with his family as there was no valid mode of transportation then. But after graduating in 1933, he spent the next 10 years teaching in Bauchi Middle School as he goes to become a grade 1 teacher and the new headmaster of the school, forming a relationship with the likes of Amin Ukano. And as a result of his academic resilience, in 1944, he was also part of the selected few chosen to study at the University College London, which was then the University of London Institute of Education. So after returning from the UK with a diploma in 1946, he began a career in politics as he became a legislator and advocated for more rights for the Northern people. He later formed the Northern People Congress alongside his longtime friend Samadu Bello, as they won most of the seats in the Regional House of Assembly from the election in 1951. Well, in 1952, he was appointed as a Minister of Works alongside Kashim Ibrahim and Mohamed Ribadu, who were also appointed Minister of Social Services and Minister of Natural Resources, respectively. He also served briefly as Minister of Transport and also as Chief Minister in 1957 to 1960 when he became the country's first and only Prime Minister. So 
So Tafala Balewa was killed on the 15th of January 1966 in a military coup alongside the likes of Sir Amadou Bello, the Northern Premier, first to Sokotebo, the Minister of Finance, and the Western Premier as of the time, Samuel Ladoki Akintola and others. And according to the short-circuited young coup plotters, the coup was carried out as a result of the corrupt ways of the politician at the helm of power as of the time, which personally to me sounds like a silly excuse to grab power because as of the time, Sabu Bakatafala Balewa was one of the most humble, down-to-earth and upright minister as of the time. But I basically don't understand why he was caught in the crossfire, but I feel he had to go based on the simple fact that he was just the Prime Minister and not assassinating him as of the time, we hinder their pursuit for power. So according to a publication written by Chief Femi Fani Kayode, which had been later debunked based on lack of proper evidence, it was said that Tafala Balewa died of asthma. This theory was prepared by Chief Matthew Mbu from a hearsay account of Christopher Okibu, who was close friends with Major Emmanuel Efe Jr., who allegedly pulled the trigger on Tafala Balewa. This theory was also backed by an eyewitness in the person of the ex Ogun State Governor Ulushegu Osuba, who was, as of the time, a young journalist and wrote an article that was published by the Daily Time newspaper on the 22nd of January 1966, where he said that he saw the Prime Minister body propped up in a sitting position lying on the tree seven days later after the commencement of the 15th January 1966 school. And according to him, the body was still fresh, while the body of the Finance Minister Okutsebu was few meters away from him and was severely decomposing but to me the simple truth remains that even though the theory is backed by an elder statement it can't still be accepted as there was no pictorial evidence to back the actual crime scene and besides what difference does it make for posterity majors and the answer is it doesn't change anything You can't accept an idea or statement without facts or evidence. But the fact still remains that in the early morning of the 15th of January 1966, Tafala Balewa was arrested from his home and shot, and his body was discovered seven days later alongside the finance minister, first Sukutibu. And that's fact. You see, there's actually nothing to back Ulusegu Osubu claim of the PM body being fresh as post-mortem evidence was done by doctors and loots as of the time. And there were numerous eyewitness accounts of people that saw the body in a terrible shape like Alaji Maitama Sule and Ahmed Kari, his private secretary, and those that attended the barrier in Bauchi. The fact still remains that Captain Okafo and Major Emmanuel Ife Jr. shot the Prime Minister and seven days later, his body was discovered along the lagos Abiyakuta Way. And that's fact. So can we pause? The truth of the matter is that during the course of my research, I stumbled across many different articles, theories and publications about the death of Sir Abu Bakr Tafala Balewa. But the fact still remains that on the 15th of January 1966, he was adopted in his home in Lagos and wasn't seen for seven days. Seven days later, he was seen lifeless along the Lagos Abiyakuta Expressway. He was subsequently taken to loot for post-mortem examination and his body was immediately transported to Bauchi, where he was laid to rest according to Islamic tradition. And that is a fact. And any publication trying to bring the idea of Sabu Bakar Tafale Balewa dying of an asthma attack still don't understand that it doesn't change the fact that he wouldn't have suffered from the asthma attack if he wasn't adopted on the 15th of January 1966. And that's fact. So guys, I'm all out and I would love to hear from me in the comment section. So please, if you've not liked this video, like this video and subscribe. I'm going to be uploading videos once in a week. So please, I would love you to support me, support me. And if you've not liked the video, like the video and subscribe because it doesn't hurt if you do, but it actually hurts me if you don't. So please, like I said earlier before, like the video and subscribe, like this video and subscribe. Peace. Mm -hmm.